What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat. Today we're going to be playing Road Redemption, the early access build. This came out a couple months ago. I've had it sitting on my hard drive for a while. Decided to boot it up and play it about a week and a half ago and have been having a blast. If you don't know what it is, it's a procedurally generated racing game in which you can bludgeon your foes to death and shoot them and blow them up. And then it also kind of gives you random challenges along the way. And so if you die, it does have permadeath. If you lose all your health, that's it. You'll die, and you get XP that you get to spend on new stuff for your motorcycle, new upgrades, new skills, etc. And then, if you survive and you make it through the races, you get money, which you use to buy temporary bonuses, which will then make your life a lot easier. Now, I've played everything through the Campaign Plus, and I've reset my save for this series so that we can experience it together. I don't know how many episodes I'm going to do for right now. I'll basically keep it flying for as long as people want to see it. And so, we'll, let's start the campaign off. Let's start the campaign. Enough talking for right now. I'm going to join up into my own game. I'm hoping that later on they add a whole bunch of, like, cooperative type stuff and a whole bunch of... I would love to see this game go competitive, to be honest, because it's very, very tight. It's very, very clean, and I think playing this with your friends, you could actually have a very real competitive experience with this game. And in fact, this is one of the few games that I've thought about actually like getting good at and spending a lot of time playing. And believe me, I have spent probably about 30% of every day since I got it playing it. Alright, let's take that guy out. So the controls, so that you know what they do. Uh, left click is going to make you swing to the left. Right click is going to make you swing to the right. Shift is going to make you block and parry. Spacebar is going to make you drift slightly and turn harder. It makes you lean into the turn, essentially. Q makes you grab somebody, and then E makes you kick somebody, which is helpful if you're trying to get them, like, off of an obstacle like the bridge or something like that. Take that guy out before he takes me out, because he was definitely thinking about it. And we need to be murdering people, because that's how we make money. Every time we kill somebody, we get health, we get nitrous, and we get money, which we can spend on upgrades for the future. Our character is unupgraded right now, so much in the way it is in Rogue Legacy, we're going to have some problems on our first run, but once we start upgrading, you'll see that we really, really, really start to dominate the competition and things become a lot less risky. Let's see if we can keep it on the road for right now. The game randomly loses its frame rate, so I've been really, really worried about that as well. The game is not optimized very well at the moment. It kind of, even if you put it on the lowest setting, seems to just chug down to like 10 frames a second every now and again. If that ends up happening, it'll probably cut the series a little bit short because obviously nobody wants to watch a racing game in like 5 frames per second, but it does happen from time to time. Those people who were on the stream the last time I played this will tell you that it seems to die for almost no reason every now and again. It just seems to be related to how many AI calculations are being made. Because the more things that are on screen, the more your frame rate will die. I missed that guy. You can do late hits, just in case you're a fan of, you know, NFL Blitz or whatever. You can late hit people, you still get paid for it, you still get your nitrous, you still get your cash. And so this is actually the way we drive in California. Like, seriously, this is what it's like out there. Just everybody acting crazy, murdering each other, so on and so forth. I'm going to replace my shovel with a combat axe because it offered me that and then we made fourteen hundred dollars in the last race I'm gonna spend it on increasing my attack damage by fifteen percent now remember these upgrades with the cash are only for the remainder of this run if we die this doesn't matter this all goes away but every single race that you complete awards you with experience every single person you kill gives you like fifteen experience at the end when you die you get to go to an actual screen full of passives that you can put points into and those last for the remainder of the game until you reset your save file because you're doing a YouTube series all right, race number two. Let's see how it goes. Race number two is looking like a takedown mission, and so this is purely murder for murder's sake. I've got to take out all the other cyclists on the road. We've got ourselves a nail bat, we've got ourselves a pipe, and we've got ourselves a combat axe. This guy has got to know our intentions by now. Now, all weapons in this game have different stats and skills. Some hit for more, some swing faster, some swing slower, some have a longer reach. You really don't know until you play around with them a little bit. The pipe that I'm wielding right now is kind of a really, really good middle ground if you're starting the game out. It's fast enough to where you can outswing people with heavy weapons, but it's slow enough to where it still does a little bit of damage. And let me get that guy before he goes off the cliff over there. Yes, the AI will drive off a cliff to avoid you hitting them in the face. He just parried me. You want to avoid being parried because it breaks your weapon at a really high rate. But if you can get a swing off like that, it tends to work out. The little red guys, so if they're wearing a red bodysuit, they block a lot. That's all that that means. And so there are little visual clues that you can find along the way, much in the same vein as what you used to see in, like, Streets of Rage. Final Fight, Fatal... F eh, I think I'm getting my games mixed up. I always get Fatal Fury and Final Fight mixed up for some reason. And I know which one is right. I just do it wrong all the time. There we go. So anyways, in Final Fight and games like that, they have er enemies that are colored different things because they do different stuff. Well, I don't know if Final Fight had that. Some fighting games do. Alright, in this one we get to select our next mission so we can race the jackals. Jackals! Is it a jackal? Or we can race some snakes. I think I'm going to race the jackals because I don't have a good history with the snakes. 
we want to go with critical damage. So critical hits in this game are achieved if you bump the enemy with your bike and then hit them right after, you get a critical damage up because I think it like breaks their block or something like that. I don't know. It's a skillful move that I'm not good at and I'm rarely able to pull off when I want to. So I typically don't go for critical damage because I always screw it up. Instead, I think I'm going to go for health gain up by 27%. So everything we kill from now on is going to give us 27% more health, which can actually be really, really good. Now, the kills do give you more or less rewards depending on how challenging they are. Oh, we're racing on this one. Okay, so on this one, I'm actually going to want to lay low on the violence. We've got to make it in the top three on this one. Otherwise, we fail the mission. If we don't make it into the top three, that's that. However, if we're in number three, we only get 33% of the cash reward. If we're second, we get 66%. And if we're first place, we get that lovely, lovely 100%. I'm going to try and kick him off the bridge. Did it work? Yeah, I kicked scissors off the bridge. That's what you get, you motorcycling moron. Ah, got you with the battle axe. I've got a really, really long, like, pole axe thing going on right now. I've also got an AK-47. My weapons are listed in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, in case you hadn't noticed. And then at the top right hand, you can see our cache and our positioning on the field. That's right, you don't just race against other motorcyclists. There are cars, and that is where guns come into play, because guns are great at getting rid of these nasty... They're good for killing cyclists, too, but they're even better for killing cars. Now, if the car has a red thing over the top of it, it means you get bonus health for killing it, like you get bonus points, basically. You get a little bit of a boost. Wow, that car just took everybody out. No dams given. The downside to a firearm is that you drive slower with a firearm. And B, you can't block while you have a firearm. And so people can get up close to you. And unfortunately, it's very hazardous aiming to the side of yourself in this game. Get yourself into a lot of trouble. There's our first place Mark. We want to take him out. Our first place James. Our first place Steve. Whatever you want to call him. I'm not really sure what happened right there. But we just got a hell of a lot of air. But we lost our positioning. So we need to hurry up. And catch up to the front man otherwise we're not gonna get paid out and we need that money to make our character more proficient at the ass whoopings oh car in the middle of the lane all right laying over on the divider that's all good we can get around it later on we're gonna get a lot more tools to help us survive you get a grappling hook you get some jump jets like a space marine it's actually a lot of fun there are some really really cool things in this game that you can play around with and I'm excited to see what the developers bring in the future this is a game that has killed a huge amount of time for me over the last 72 hours or so I've just I've been jonesing. I've been playing this game like crazy. I've been getting that itch and just like shaking slightly and like sweating a whole lot and just being like, oh my god, I need to play the game. It's been like 10 minutes since I played the game. Okay, so this one we've got to assassinate rival gang members before time runs out. Should be fairly simple. I'm going to go with weapon durability up. I'm going to go with experience gain. Actually, I'm going to go with max nitro up. That can be really useful once you get to the harder races later on, especially considering our character right now is unupgraded. We have no bonuses at the moment from our passives, so we're going to be playing this like the hardcore super difficult way Midas vest so Midas vest is gonna make it so that you take twice as much damage but you get 150 percent bonuses to like everything that you get when you kill somebody and so if you're trying to level up and you're good at the game that's probably what you would want to go with you can also anything along the bottom tends to be a one-time refill so right here that'll recover my nitro this one recovers my health just things to be aware of let's ride Okay, and so this actually shouldn't be that hard because we happen to have a firearm, and in fact, I think I'm going to try and save it right now. This is the first episode where we get introduced to the jump jets. If we press the F key, we're going to be able to use jump jets like that right there to kind of propel ourselves. And so be careful about those, though, but they're really, really useful for later on because we start getting road hazards pretty soon that you've got to jump over. And so it's got a little bit of Battletoads action, too, if you've been feeling really, really warty and your tongue has become quite elastic and you find yourself eating flies. I don't know. It's been a weird week for me, too. Ow, we just got clubbed in the face. Get out of here. You are not worthy of my tire. Hey, hey, what's up with that, man? What's up with that? Get out of here. Okay, so my pipe finally broke and I'm back to my tire iron. Right here, you've got to time this just right. And BAM! There it is right there. I've been practicing a lot. I've been playing the game a bit. I don't want to talk. I don't want to be too egotistical, but you know, I've been playing the game here and there. Oh, I was going to try and... Mm, nope, nope, nope. Take it tight. Oh, God! So close! Jump Jets almost took me out right there. This is a great map, by the way, to kick people off of. So think about that every now and again. Bianca Line just got took the hell out. Ow! Just got clubbed in the face again. Should, I should be killing people, shouldn't I? That's actually my goal. I keep forgetting and thinking that I'm racing or something. Let me see if I can... There we go. I don't know if that got anybody. Like, kicks in midair. I don't know. Let me take somebody else out. There it is. And so I'm actually going to get rid of this gun right now because it's only got like four bullets left in it. And if it's only got a couple bullets left in it, I like to get rid of it so that the slot will be open for something else when it auto-regens me a new weapon. You never know what you're going to get. This game is like a box of chocolates. And oh my, 
we just got the amazing, amazing toffee. So we got a C4 explosive. The C4 explosive, what that is, is you can slap it onto somebody a la Gears of War and then just run away super fast and it just blows them up and everybody around them. It is hilarious. It's a fantastic weapon. It allows you to eliminate those nasty competitors with one hit without having to put yourself at risk, especially if you learn how to time it properly. On this level up, I'm going to go with attack damage up because that generic passive is really good. Razor Blade is kind of a risky thing. Razor Blade makes you deal a lot more damage, but simultaneously it makes it so you can't be blocked. The downside to this is that you drain your own health every time you attack, and so I don't tend to use that one very much. Third time's the charm makes it so that we have 75% less health, but we get three lives. And 75% less health of this would be really, really bad. That would be a lot of health, like somewhere around the realm of... God, like 90 health or so. I mean, it would be bad. It would be really, really, really bad. Okay, so it'd probably be 12. I would be 120. I know how to do math. I can do math. Actually, no, that's 4 out of... That's 80%. Whatever. I hate doing math. I quit. I quit. It's hard to do it on the fly when you're broadcasting to. But yeah, it's somewhere around like... I don't know. Probably 110-ish, maybe. This one's a race. See, it only took me like 35 tries, but I got there eventually. The thing that I do like is from now on you get jump jets, in case you were wondering. So now we can use our jump jets forevermore, unless we die and have to restart. And then you gotta wait till you get the top of the building level once again. Oh, but the jump jets can save you from some really nasty situations. They can also be... Get out of here! Ooh, sometimes the enemies will try and suicide bomb you when you slap C4 on them, because you can get taken out by the blast radius, so be aware of that. You'll want to keep your ear to the ground. And watch out for that if it comes down the pipe that way. Number 8 is right behind us. I see number 6 right up in front of us. Number 8, C4. Enjoy that, pal. Goodbye. And so Bianca Line has once again... We've been really picking on Bianca lately. I feel a little bit guilty. I feel a little bit guilty. Bianca has definitely been the target of my ire over the course of the last couple maps. Kick him off the mountain real fast. Hopefully that works. Sometimes they come out at the bottom right there and it doesn't actually kill him. I don't know. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm going to try and get that guy with C4. There we go. I'm going to try and get this car with C4 to give me a little bit of a lead over him. Pop the nitrous. Oh, unfortunately... I think we got... Oh, we didn't get taken out. Okay, we're still good. We'll have to use the nitrous, though, to get out of the rocks over here. Okay, so I think we should be able to get back on base now. I don't know. Fourth place competitor will slap a C4 on him and then watch out for a pipe. We're going to hit that pipe because we like to give ourselves a handicap by comparison to our foes. We like to let them feel like they have a chance. I don't know. I like to let them feel like they have a chance. I think where is fourth place at? I don't see him up here anywhere. Let's get an actual weapon out and see if we can get a little bit of extra speed while we fly along. Okay, so there's number three. I'm going to try and block. Nope. I don't want to fly off the cliff here. Really, really, really don't want to fly off a cliff. That sort of takes the edge off of winning. Even if I win, I fell off a cliff. Like, who wants to say that they won after falling off a cliff? I guess it could be a testament to your endurance and your ability to, like, overpower your enemies. Yeah, now you ain't got nothing to fight with. You got a problem now, don't you? There we go. We'll get rid of him. For some reason, he exploded when I hit him with a tire iron. It does that sometimes. I think it denotes that you got a critical hit. First place competitor is looking like a vehicle, so I need to take him out. Well, a larger vehicle. There we go. And so now we should be able to... There we go. Thrust on up. We've got about uh, a couple hundred meters left. Well, about a kilometer left until we hit the finish line, I think. We'll get there, though. It'll be all right. We're in second place still. How did that happen? It just said first place was the car. Well, first place is me now. Goodbye. And so let's ride this thing out nice and slow. We don't have any nitrous or anything left. So unfortunately, our enemies may make a push to boost past us in just a second. Sometimes they like to get on the NOS on the final like leg of the journey. But I think we're good. Yeah, I always like to jump jet through the exit. I don't know why. It's just me. And so we managed to win that one fairly well. I noticed a little bit of a frame drop right there. Hopefully it's not something that comes out permanently. It, it happens in this game. It happens no matter what. I put it on like a medium graphical setting and no matter what you do, the frame rate dies. Even if you put it on simple, like the lowest one. We've got an AK-47. I'm going to use that to swap out my C4 because we're almost out of C4. On this side, what do I want to do? we got $3,000, almost $4,000. Let's go with max health up. We'll go with nitro gain up. Yeah, that sounds good. Nitro gain. It's kind of like Rogaine. 
you know, Rogaine, that's that's a hairstyling thing for rowboats. And then you've got Nitro Gain, which is for motorcyclists. I don't know. I feel like I was stretching that one. We've got a takedown mission. We've got a nail bat ready to go, and so I think I'm gonna line up a few enemies, take them out with melee, and if we get close on down to the end, then I'll use my firearm to get rid of them. Ah, he blocked me, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to come up with alternative means to get rid of him. Meaning I'm gonna have to bleach blonde my hair and then spike it all up and act all alternative. Let's see here. I don't think... Yeah, that's not going to work either. All these guys have red armor, which means that basically they're block spamming. And what's weird is they can block you even mid-swing. Very, very strange. So these red guys may actually be keeping me from completing my mission properly. What I need to do... Ow. Is get clubbed in the face. Damn it. Uh, I'm going to get my revenge right now, though. They've also got more armor and whatnot. There we go. If I can get a couple of these red guys out of the running... It'll leave us in a better position. Oh, good. They gave me an MP5, too. Good. That was a perfectly timed weapon respawn. Couldn't have asked for a better one right now, actually. There we go. We'll hit the brake and allow him to have it. We'll get his friend over there, too. A couple people off in the distance. Don't really want to waste. Got him. Did I? Yeah, I got him. Got that guy, too. And so, as you can see, guns can be a tremendous boon to your survival when you're on, like, one of these missions right here. Or the other one that I like to have a lot of guns for is there's one where you have to get your police stars up by causing lots of chaos. Guns are useful on that one, too. And if you don't have a firearm, it's actually pretty difficult to complete. You may get to see that right now as we have a grenade launcher. I don't know what this next mission is going to be, but they usually give you a grenade launcher before the police one. I'm going to go for XP gain up and attack damage up. Right now we're running a very, very offensive game. We're throwing middle fingers, we've spray painted all kinds of terrible, horrible words on the side of our motorcycle. Our only skills are those on offense. What are we doing right now? Yeah, track police, that's what I figured. So let's open fire on a couple people here. We've got ourselves a Glock. We've got Glock 17 or like a Glock 19 or something. Got that guy. No. I will get my revenge on you, by the way. Let me take out this car. There we go. Joe Coffee just had a really, really bad day. Oh my god, but so did I. We are unanimous in our terrible day having. Or at least we are codependent in our misery. I'm not really sure. Cooperating in our misery? I don't know. Let me see what I can accomplish here. You want to kill the red cars. The ones with the little red arrow above them. Those are priority targets that you really should think about killing off. Alright, grenade launcher time. Boom! There it is. Alright, so police level is up. What I like to do with the grenade launcher, I'll show you here in just a minute, is I actually like to jump up in the air like that and fire downwards. It's actually more accurate if you do that, and so you can actually cause all kinds of trouble if you get it going along those lines. Especially if an enemy rolls up next to you like that guy is, just jump jet away from it. Don't even need to worry about him. I think I'll get those guys right there. Get those guys right there. This is definitely a mission where we can make a lot of money. If you get a double cash right before this mission, you should always take it. There's a double cash buff. I haven't brought it up, but if you're going to be killing a lot of people during your mission, you should always take the double cash buff. Right now, it appears as though the frame rate is deciding to take a giant old shit on me, which is unfortunate. It makes me sad, but we'll live with it for right now. Uh, and I may have just sabotaged my own progress, but it doesn't really matter. We've got more than enough grenades left to hurt people and maim people and just do all kinds of damage. This is why I love this game right here. This is one of my favorite challenges because it really isn't a challenge. You just kind of go through annihilating everybody and they have no chance in hell. Double kill! And they both had those little red things above their heads. Even better, although I got smacked with a pipe for it, so I don't feel so confident anymore. Alright, we got to get our health back somehow. These guys are going to try and kick me off a cliff, in case you were wondering. There we go. We killed Terry Pratchett. Kill that car, too, although we don't have that many bullets left, so maybe we should just finish this thing off. Take him out before he cleaves us with a machete or that giant kukri or whatever the hell that was. I'm not even sure what that guy just whipped out to try and hurt us with. Got that guy just barely before he got us. Unfortunately, all that we're left with right now... Actually, I'm going to use the nightstick. That shovel has a long reach, but it's really, really slow. Get that guy. I had a feeling he was going to crash into me like that when we came around the corner. Get that guy twice. There we go. He's got a little bit more health than I expected. The ones with the helmets have more health. Go figure. It's harder to take them out with a single swing. We're also not upgraded, as I said before. Not being upgraded can really, really hurt you as you try and accomplish what you're doing here. And so another successful mission for us. Off we go, and we're ending with full health and full nitrous, which puts us in a really, really good position for competing in the next map, whatever the challenge is. So the next challenge is going to be a race. All we've got to do is outrun them. Let's take the Uzi. I'm going to put the Uzi in instead of... I like both these weapons. I like all three of these, but I like the Uzi as well as a backup weapon. I'm going to do it instead of the wrench. 
What do we have over here? Ammunition up. I definitely want ammunition up. So that's going to give us 30% more ammo with all weapons for the remainder of the run. I'm going to go with... I'm going to save the rest of the cash, actually. We'll spend it next time. Every now and again, there's an ability that allows you to turn all of your cash into XP, which can be really, really useful. Crazed Driver Zone. So what that means... Crazed Driver Zone means that there's going to be people coming from the opposite direction that will swerve and try and hit us. It actually becomes very, very frustrating at times. Luckily, the AI has the same problems that we do when it comes to dodging those challenges, so it's not that big of a worry. There's one right there. Ow, I figured I was going to take that hit, unfortunately. Got him that time, though. Ooh, we got, ah, we got C4 on the road, so we got to watch out for that as well. We've got somebody throwing C4 out on the road. That car is going to try and... Ah, more C4 down. It took out a bunch of people over there, but it didn't get me. So as long as I didn't get taken out in the explosion, I don't really mind. That's sort of the way that I interact with explosions. If it doesn't affect me, and eh, not worried about it. Looks like a lumber truck has overturned. Take that guy out to solidify our fifth place position. We have to be in the top three. Otherwise, we don't get to bypass. That bomb's going to go off long before I get over there. But what you do want to watch out for is you want to make sure... Oh, this car over here... Let me... That guy's going to try and get me. I want to watch out for him. I'm going to take this real tight and on the inside right now. I don't think... Oh, God. Okay, so we're way off the track. I'm going to say put me on the track. If you get knocked off the track, you should always do that. It's way, way faster than waiting for the game to recover you. Crazed driver right there. Guy on my other side trying to take me out with a shovel. I can't block him right now. I probably should have jump jetted out of that. Would have been a bit more useful, but... Ah, let's get away. Hold on. Just like Lenny Kravitz, I want to get away right, right now. I'm going to get rid of the number one competitor with the machine gun. He's down. I think we've only got a very, very narrow lead. We want to nitrous it through just to make sure that we solidify our victory. And bam, there it is. Okay, okay. We're looking good right now. We're looking real, real good. I think we got time for one more map. And so let's go ahead and use jump jets. Okay, so this is the jumping puzzle. This one's actually pretty easy. It's almost a gimme. And so what I want to do right now is we've got enough cash. Let's take cash up. Let's take experience gain up. And let's take max health up just in case. Let's ride. So on this one, all we have to do is make the jumps. That's it. You just got to press F at the right time. There are going to be little tricks and challenges in here. So occasionally it's going to put low bars and things that are going to try and decrapitate you. And that totally sucks because I don't want my decrapitated. But it happens from time to time. Sometimes you want to take a look at the jump, especially if you've got a blind jump to make sure that you're going to make it. Like, for example, right there, that construction lift will take you out if you don't boost at the right time. So I sort of screwed the pooch right there. Luckily, we're half of the way through anyways, so it's not too big of a deal. There we go. There's the proper boost that I was looking for. I waited it out too long because I didn't want to hit my head on that nasty little construction scaffolding. He's not that nasty. Honestly, it's a pretty clean and kosher scaffolding. You can bring him to dinner in front of Ma. You don't have to worry about him saying all kinds of terrible, filthy, horrendous things. It's actually not that nasty. I just said that because it has the tendency to take my scalp off. Oop, and we're going to have to double boost right there. There we go. So the boost has a cooldown on it in case you're wondering how that works. It's got a very, very short cooldown, but if you don't time it right, you can definitely get yourself into a bad situation. We survive perfectly fine, and then we jump jet off the buildings, flying high, butterfly in the sky. I can fly twice as high. Take a look, my engine cooks, flying rainbow. I don't know. I'm trying to come up with stuff right now, and I got nothing. We could take a machete. This one is a takeout mission, and so we'll wait. I'm going to break it off right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me on my first run of Road Redemption. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and as always, hi do.